Hey guys, and welcome back to another Factorio workshop. As always, I am joined by Zuri. Greetings. And today we are going over uh, something a little bit different. Uh, now these are circuit builds, but these are green circuit builds for marathon mode. Um, if you do not know, marathon mode is an option that is built into the game now in 015, and it uh, increases recipe costs and technology costs. And if we look here, we are in a game with those settings. Um, green circuits now take 10 copper cable in marathon mode um, instead of the three that they take in vanilla. So uh, we've, uh, we have some builds here. These top three are by Zuri, and then uh, the one lower down, which we'll go over in a few minutes, is uh, an actual submission. So I'll let you start going over your Zuri. Sure. Well, I tried to do this quite a few different ways, and the... at first I actually wanted to I tried to put cabling on a belt because the build ratio is five to one, mm -hmm. but I couldn't get it compact enough. And I was having issues at the very small tier or low tier stuff to get enough cabling on the belt without making it incredibly expensive. And I wanted to make this as cheap as possible to build. And this is for testing purposes. I didn't put the belt build up top like I should have, but there's a functional one on the very bottom one. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the build you need to make a full yellow belt using Tier 1 machines. The next one down is a full red belt using Tier 2 machines. And the next one is a full blue belt using Tier 3 machines. And yeah. the third build here has the necessary belt balancers and extractors. Perfect. So, uh, so yeah, this one will probably be the one that I include in the description uh, because you mentioned to me, Zuri, that it would probably be easier and best to just use this, uh, this build and then exchange the belts for what you need. Um, so yellow belt if you, you know, place it initially early game. Yeah, it's easier to, to stamp down like the first, first little bit here and build on as you can and upgrade as you can because it'll be expensive. Also, before we move on, I haven't seen a, a circuit build for a marathon that doesn't stall out every once in a while just because it's so hard to get all the materials into the machines correctly mm -hmm. like you'll see these machines stall out every once in a while there's not much that i figured out how to correct for that yeah it's just uh, due to the ratios and how much you have to get in there so quickly it's it's pretty difficult because also guys keep in mind that even though it needs 10 cable the craft time is not changed so you need 10 cable every half second or 20 per second, um, which is really hard. So, uh, yeah, just for clarification, too, because uh, I wondered about this. So this inputs five blue belts, um, and then you mentioned to me, Zuri, that this bottom one, this red one, uh, since it's split in two different directions, then you only need red belt after this first splitter. Yeah. I There's not exactly half a blue belt you can do. Red's pretty close mm -hmm. but it only serves the the very outside 16 cabling which is exactly one blue belt worth right and i guess i could have done a second half belt for the very ends and then done exactly you know fractions of belts for all of these mm -hmm. but i decided just to use my extractor design instead yeah it actually takes a little bit less belt than the perfect um, machine counts that I was considering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is uh, that's Zuri's build here. I like it. It's uh, you know direct insertion, which is definitely one method to go, and that would be my first instinct. However, um, interestingly, this bottom build down here uses uh, puts cable on a belt, and I was very <laughs> Skeptical at, at first, but uh, you know, Zuri and I kind of talked, and again, due to the ratio, the production ratio of this, um, putting cable on a belt, I think, is actually an option for the marathon mode um, thing for this because it is quite difficult to come up with a good build that uses direct insertion. And uh, this build down here is submitted by Rough Waves, and this is just one stamp of it. Um, I will include the string for the whole blueprint, which is huge. I'm going to just hover over this. Um, so he has a blueprint book, which lags me out just like opening it, um, which has, I think, uh, one, two, three, four, five, like 10 stamps of these. 
and rail yards included with it and such and all the separate parts of course so uh, this one's quite interesting because he actually includes the smelting for it in the build and utilizes boat weaving to make it very compact um which i think is really really cool i, I didn't even consider the idea of using uh doing smelting within the build and he direct inserts about half of it so i'm gonna let you uh Take over here, sir, if you have any other thoughts and comments in this build. It's a really great idea, actually, to put smelting as close as possible to its home, its greatest consumers. And the cabling for green circuits is going to be some of your greatest consumers of copper. So including it as close as possible is actually a really good way to save on UPS and overall footprint size, as opposed to what I did up top, which was those massive belt runs. Mm-hmm. And the way he did the with the train stations, you can use train balancing techniques instead of belt balancing techniques to just fill these up with the trains. And it's really a clever way of doing it and really good for your machine too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we did. I did make one small modification. I replaced one of the fast inserters for the cabling on each side with a stack inserter wasn't quite bringing in enough cabling. Yeah, the uh, the two fast inserters that were here, it was stalling quite often. And even as it is with the stack inserter, it still does stall every once in a while. And as Zuri mentioned um, before, it's maybe unavoidable. Um, it's just, again, due to the massive amount of cable you need for this, it's uh, maybe unavoidable. And a quick note, because I'm sure people may be wondering why we didn't just put two stack inserters here. Um, the deal is that due to their uh, pickup amount, you know, they pick up 12 things at a time, but they swing the same speed, I believe, as a fast inserter. So it actually takes them longer to pick up and insert things than fast inserters. So if you put two stack inserters, it would probably make it worse because you would have longer delays between when you insert cable. Yeah, as soon as there's one circuit in the machine and there's less than two crafting worth of cable in the machine, that's when it tells the inserter, the input inserter, to pick up. At least with the uh, machines in base speed. So if you have all stack inserters, they'll all receive a turn the signal to activate at the same time. And they'll fill up as much as possible and then swing, and that'll take about you know two to three times as long to do that than a fast inserter would, and the machine will stall out quite often. Yeah. So important out there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it is really quite clever because he's used, again, the belt weaving, the different levels of belt that he can then run on within the same plane, essentially. And uh, you also may be wondering, because I was a little bit confused, this red belt here that does nothing um, by itself in this one stamp, um, that's actually there for the tileability. If I pull this up and go to this, uh, another stamp of this, um, when you tile this, it lines up like so on my screen, um, minus the box that's in the way that I put there, and uh, that's why that's there, to tile. Now, one thing you'd mentioned to me, Zuri, which was a good catch, is that he's actually not utilizing the um, underground compression trick on the export, and when you stack these up to enough, I imagine that you would need that, or it would at least help. Yeah, you would definitely need to use compression tricks. They use them extensively, it seems, in the this cabling. Mm -hmm. But you're going to need them if you build this big enough. Again, it's it's really hard to build this big enough to, to utilize this. Yeah, that's true. Well, I think that's probably it. Um, one last note I want to make is that uh, Marathon Mode is just pretty insane. Uh, I'm going to open up production here and we are total making 5,000 circuits a minute but consuming 25,000 copper plate a minute just for 5,000 circuits and keep in mind that 5,000 circuits is for every build. All these builds are on. So it's for three of Zuri's builds plus this build and we're only getting 5,000 a minute from 25,000 copper. So uh, you, you, you do need like insane amounts of these if you plan to go anything big in uh, marathon mode. Yeah, and, good luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck, exactly. So, do you have any last thoughts for uh, this or any of your builds, Zuri? Nope. 
Alrighty, perfect. That'll do it, guys. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed uh, the blueprint book for this will be in the description, and Zuri's last build will be in the description as well. And uh, yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts, as always, down in the comments. Uh, you know, if, if you have a build that you managed to get working 100% without delays for marathon mode, definitely submit that. Um, any other submissions? And if you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like. But until next time, we will catch you later. Later.